So last time we talked a bit about masculine, feminine, the masculine wound, how this shows up in both men and women. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about what happens when your root chakra, which for the men, your root chakra is one of your most important chakras, one of your most powerful. Um, for the women, your most powerful would be the sacral chakra. But uh, it, the cool thing about it is we have both. Both are very important and for us to feel our best and to basically be living like our best lives we have to have both functioning healthily so for some people they might have an overactive root chakra one that is kind of doing too much <laughs> um, there are some people who have an overactive sacral chakra uh, but i want to talk a little bit about the root chakra and how both men and women sometimes we can get stuck in this root chakra and when we get stuck it completely balance, well it doesn't balance, it unbalances the rest of our other chakras and it's very very difficult for us to just get to a place of just calm and of ease, of being happy, feeling like we're financially supported and emotionally supported. So for the root chakra, it's at the base of your spine. Um, if you're reading into like Kundalini, it, it's in that area, base of the spine and so um, it, it's going to be for a male, like you know your pelvic region of where your penis is, for the women, um, you know by your like vaginal canal. And you know this chakra, it's represented by the color red, it basically is our survival instincts. Like this is what keeps us going, this is you putting a roof of your head Food on the table um, this is your drive to survive like this is your will to survive and for a man this is great because in the society we live in uh, men are just expected to be providers so them having a very healthy a very strong root chakra is almost expected um, yeah but that does not mean that a woman cannot have a very strong healthy root chakra you know, there are times when maybe her partner is gone he's away and she has to take care of everyone, keep the house running like a tight ship, make sure that the children are safe and healthy and fed. And she has to get into that role of being, uh, you've heard this before, I'm both mom and dad. And uh, th that's a really good way to put it. Like, you know, when you're being mom and dad, you are using that root chakra. You are stepping into that masculine frame and there's nothing wrong with it. But uh, today we're going to talk about when it can hurt us, when it can hurt both men and women when we get stuck in this root chakra, when we get stuck in that masculine frame and when it's overactive, right? Because we always need this. Don't get me wrong, we need our root chakra, we should use it. I mean, when the root chakra is working smoothly, this is what keeps you wanting to be a better you. It keeps you, you know, doing those little things, like making sure you're going to all of your classes, make sure that you're taking um, things seriously about what you're putting in your body, especially if you have maybe a certain body image goal or a weight goal, like, you know, this drive, this just pure will to take action, that's what it's all about. Um, sometimes if we get too stuck in, um, well, if we get too stuck even in our like solar plexus or if we get too stuck in our um, third eye, we'll, we'll dream it up, we'll think about it, but we won't take that action and that root chakra is really where that action comes in at. So for a woman, how this can wound her is when um, maybe she's been left, she's been abandoned. Um, this could happen at a very young age in the household, maybe her father left um, or maybe, you know, the father just wasn't that great of a dad to begin with and the mother asked him to leave either way um you know she had to stand you know step up and help her mom just take care of everyone else take care of the household and they had to both work harder because they no longer had that um that extra adult income you know and it is going to be difficult because in this day and age it's very difficult to raise a family on one income it, it's very difficult you, you really need to and um, as someone who would be still in the household, so probably under the age of 18, this person still has to go to school. And so usually this means both, you know, both people are very stressed out, the mother and the daughter or the mother, this would be a son. Both people are stressed out. They're working very hard to make ends meet. And you know, they're constantly in this action oriented root chakra of do, 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 get to this job. Oh get changed, get ready, make it to the second job by on, you know, the opposite side of town by this time. 
oh my gosh, now I have to pick up the kids from daycare, go get them. Um, you know, it's constant, constant, constant. Oh my gosh, I have a test on Monday. I, I really need to start studying for that. It's you're constantly in action, you know, survival mode of what you're doing already is is difficult for you to even make ends meet and so it's like if you even take a second to breathe to relax you fall behind and so you know being in this this survival kind of um this survival mentality you could see how for long periods of time it can do a lot of damage and so when we get to a place where we start dating we start to get kind of competitive I'm doing so much, I do this, this, and this, I'm the busiest person you know. Um, you know, you start to, I don't wanna say brag, but uh, it, it's kind of uh, what I was saying in the last video of, you know, sometimes people will be like, what do you bring to the table? You know, I can't settle for a broke man. And usually these are people who are, or have been stuck in their root chakra, um, you know, just trying to make ends meet. They do not have time to just kind of relax and to enjoy giving and receiving love they they kind of approach love with a very tough exterior like you've you've probably never done anything wrong to this person yet but they're already kind of looking at you and treating you like you may potentially be the bad guy so you know as i having been this woman being in competition with males number one it's it's very unattractive <laughs> just to be blunt with it. it it's very unattractive um some of us tend to think that if we have a great career if we make a lot of money that that automatically puts us ahead of all the other women and in reality um there's a lot of men who i've actually seen leave their career oriented wife or girlfriend for you know a woman who kind of just has a part-time job who doesn't really make a lot of money she doesn't have the newest vehicle it's definitely not a luxury vehicle she doesn't dress all in designer um she's pretty don't get me wrong but she is not you would not say oh that is a successful woman you'd just be like oh that that's a that's a cool girl or you know that's a good person you wouldn't really be, be like you know oh she's a boss b-i-t-c-h so for men you have to understand that you having this amazing high level paying job and you know being able to basically be mom and dad especially if you are um, you know a single parent well that is cool you know and, it, and it's nice to know that you have the drive to work yourself like a dog every day it definitely will not um lock you down you know a quality partner quality um, man just because you have to also work on your personality how are you talking to them are you talking to them like you are above them or like you are the authority figure and like because they don't make as much as you do they are below you or because they're not as busy as you because they're not working three jobs just to make ends meet um, while also going to school that you know they can't keep up with you um, when we start to low-key belittle people we don't mean to do it I really don't think we do I just think we get so caught up in our own rat race which at times can be very miserable to never get a chance to be able to relax because you'll fall behind but we get so caught up in it that we kind of we kind of look at other people who have it easier and we're a little jaded about it so be very careful if you and I've had to be both I, I've had to be the woman who had to step up and help my my family well I wasn't a woman I was a child <laughs> but I you know I had to be that kid who helped um, make extra money while I was in you know even middle school just so we would have enough money for gas to get to school and I've also had to be you know the single parent and I can see how it is so easy to fall into just the role of survival 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 also there there's another side of it when we are in survival mode but we are also in desperation so i used the example of the mom who is trying her best to provide for her family and so she starts dating men who maybe she lowered her standards a bit just because they were financially stable or just because she knew that they would be homeless if they did not have this income so she dated this guy because he was able to provide resources he was able to help out but this wasn't the best guy he probably didn't get along with the kids 
um, she probably honestly doesn't even really love him and honestly I've seen this in a couple different ways in my own life how this plays out with people around me and um, you know so really what I see is usually the kids are the ones who suffer because they know this person does not care for them, does not love them. Sometimes he will mistreat them, but because they are, the mother is desperate, she needs help, she needs it now, and um, she keeps them around. So when you are this woman, not to say that you're going to bring in someone who's going to hurt your children or anything like that, but just know that when you are stuck in that overactive root chakra, when you're in that survival instinct, that survival mode, um, you know, the desperation to get into a relationship or to find a man or someone to help um, it comes off pretty heavy like your aura your energy um, people can feel it they can pick up on it and this is why sometimes people get into bad situations with men who maybe um, are very abusive or men who just don't respect them they might sleep with their friends over and over like repeatedly um, this isn't just one time like you know they the men kind of feel that this person is a little desperate and that she's not gonna leave and to be completely honest he's right he knows that her need for that financial security or to have someone by her side outweighs her need of um, personal happiness and um, you know self-sufficiency so I mean, he's right it doesn't make it any less wrong but you have to be very careful um, there's another I love the saying of um, you'll meet someone when you least expect it so stop looking um, so this is both true and untrue because really what's happened um when people feel like they meet the love of their life or um you know their next really happy relationship is that really it is kind of on their subconscious but they are usually content with life they are happy with going to see their friends maybe a once or twice a week they are happy with where they're going in their job they might not be making the most money they've ever made but they have faith in the future they're excited they they know that they're on the right path and um you know they might actually feel like they're on their life path and this can happen even before your career gets started this could actually happen when you were maybe you went back to school or maybe you're still in college and um, you know that one day all of these long nights all this studying is going to pay off or maybe you're in training right now and once you get that certification you know you're about to be able to maybe even switch tax brackets or you know just your entry-level job is going to be so much more than what it was before so a lot of people who can feel this self-content this excitement for the future um, they are very magnetic you you have no idea how magnetic they are and uh, people like to be around them so when they say you, you meet someone when you least expect it really on a subconscious level you know everyone wants love everyone's excited for that next relationship but really you are just living in the moment that's really what that means and so you're definitely in a flow state you are not in a state of need or state of lack even if things aren't perfect like i don't want to make it sound like everything's going to be perfect you're going to have thousands of dollars in savings in the bank you don't have to be to enter this state and to be magnetic and to um you know attract amazing friends and opportunities and maybe even relationships because like I said, um, men and women are very intuitive and we can kind of smell the desperation. We can smell when someone needs something from us and there are people who will take advantage of that. Um, just know that they're doing it unknowingly. So your want, it's not like, oh my gosh, I can tell she needs me. It's just that they will just start to get away with things and there just won't be any boundaries from you there won't be any consequences because you're afraid of doing anything and so naturally like like a child if i let the kids get into the cookies and i don't reprimand them guess what they're probably going to do it tomorrow night too and the night after that and it's the same thing with adults so i don't think it's anything that they do consciously but if you do not have clear boundaries if you not respect yourself to be able to say no or put a stop to certain things then yes people will walk over you and that's what i mean when i say that when we're in this state of need um, when we need someone, when we're really looking, when we're kind of desperate, um, you know, it gets us, we get ourselves into um, not the best situations. And I, I want to say, like, you have to take accountability for this because a lot of the times it's it, it's you not putting a stop to it. And um, it's okay, though, because we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, how do we get into that? How do we acknowledge that we might actually be doing that and how do we change it? 
So none of this is like a, oh, shame on you for letting that happen. Um, as someone who's, um, you know, been in many of these states and who's had a mom who's been like this, I understand very well. And so all of this could be fixed. So um, yeah, you don't want to be in a state of lack, either financially or emotionally. You know, the clingy girlfriend who's so afraid of him going out, even for one night, if he's meeting friends, because I have to be there, I have to make sure no one else is looking at him. And you know, this clingy state is a, uh, it can um, definitely put people off. Um, sometimes it'll push people away, actually, it, it repels them. And so uh, this is more, to our sacral chakra. Our sacral chakra really helps us to feel joy and to feel happiness and love. So as women, when we have a strong sacral chakra, that's the chakra right in between your belly button and your pelvis bone. Um, when we're in that, it really helps us to attract amazing people and uh, new friends, um, you know, a new lover, like whatever, like quality people, because you're in a vibration, a higher mental state, and you're gonna notice that you're attracting other people who are also in that vibration. Um, also, I want to, have you ever, I've seen this happen a few times. Um, let's say a person, a girl, is looking for you know a new relationship. She's looking, 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 and really, she just doesn't see anyone she's interested in. It's so difficult to find a boyfriend or to find that next relationship, and then all of a sudden, she starts dating someone, and now all of a sudden, guys are coming up and talking to her when she's at the bank or when she's out with her friends. Um, maybe exes that she felt, you know, she lost contact with and, you know, the good kind of exes, not the exes that broke your heart. You know, just the exes where you guys could have been too young or someone moved, you lost contact. Um, so yeah, people that she's wanted to hear from for so long are finally hitting her up. When this happens, um, well, sometimes it's just Mercury retrograde. <laughs> But uh, no, I'm kidding guys. Um, but sometimes, yeah, definitely it is Mercury retrograde <laughs> for the ex, for the exes and like, you know, the, the missed connections. But as far as for the other men, she does not know other strangers, you know, taking notice of her, not only taking notice, but approaching her. Sometimes you'll notice people will see you and, you know, they'll, they'll give you the eye, but they will not approach. So people actually taking action and getting to know you. Um, this happens when she's in that flow state. She's already probably in that, uh, the honeymoon stage of the guy she's dating, where every time they text you, you get this like huge smile on your face and you probably look like an idiot to other people, but it doesn't matter because you're looking down at your phone and just so excited to be texting them. Um, so when she's in that, that joy, that happiness, where she feels secure in herself, she probably feels more beautiful, um, especially if they're exchanging pictures or he's liking her social media, um, she feels seen. And um, this is what I mean, guys, when you're in that sacral chakra mode, of that feeling joy of happiness of your being in your femininity um, and in feeling sensual too um, when you're in that it just attracts people and so it's like every time you'll get in a relationship all of a sudden these people come out of the woodwork and they you know maybe someone will actually admit oh my gosh I've had a crush on you and I didn't know how to tell you and she's like why are you telling me this now um, or, or like I said the most popular one is just noticing um, absolute strangers just approaching you and just saying hey you look nice today or just starting a conversation at the gas station um you know this this is what happens when you're in that flow state so we do not always have to be talking to someone new or dating someone to get to this state um, because i've definitely used that after i figured out that i always got more attention once i was happily texting some new um attractive looking guy because um, you know it, it boosted my self-esteem um, we can actually boost that from the inside out when I would take the cheat mode and and do that just start texting like you know a lot of different guys um, or just getting a lot of different attention it uh you kind of get dependent on them and you can get attached to the validation that he's giving you so maybe his work week got crazy and all of a sudden he isn't responding as often as he was before or maybe he's not calling like he always did all of a sudden my self-esteem would plummet i would start you know i'd get nervous and i would oh my gosh i have to jump to someone new now and um you know i would always wonder what is wrong did he find someone new and you know i would really obsess over it and the funny thing is i would usually jump ship and go to someone else uh and it would always be unjustified it never actually turned out that he had lost interest in me 
or that he was with someone else but i was so scared of that rejection just because i got so attached to his constant praise his constant validation that i couldn't do anything on my own without having him notice me and so when people because people have lives too they have other things going on so he would have something completely innocent happening um and i would basically jump to conclusions and then you know remove myself from the situation prematurely and i avoided or actually i repelled a lot of good relationships a lot of good people by doing that so be careful when you are using other people to help you get into that flow state so you know you're feeling more beautiful about yourself um or you're attracting more people more opportunities um you will kind of uh, the, you'll get attached like the attachment style will be unhealthy and um they will have a lot of power over you and when they start to actually live their lives um it's gonna it's gonna break you it's gonna do more harm than good so there are ways to basically fill up your own cup from within and of course that's what we're going to talk about <laughs> doing because uh this just 100 percent works when you are um you know when you're filling up that sacral chakra when it's strong and it's working but we have to remember to not get blocked up with some of these other chakras most importantly the root chakra so we talked about how this looks bad when a woman is has like an overactive root chakra how it can repel men um and even friends <laughs> uh, even friends might find um your demeanor and just your attitude just kind of off-putting especially if they say something like oh, i'm so tired today and then you're like you're tired I had to drop the kids off at six and then I had a meeting and my boss was just nagging. You know what I mean? You're always trying to one up someone. So this is very unattractive for not only the opposite sex, but your same sex. <laughs> so don't do it. So for men, when he has an overactive root chakra, um, this man is, gosh, he's heartless. He is just, it's, it's all about him. <laughs> me, 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 me. But um, there is nothing he won't do to win. He is very competitive in the workplace. He is very competitive with his image. Um, you know, this is you know this is like the building blocks of a very shallow man. So yes, he will definitely hoard away those designer labels, or he will have that shiny Mustang with the V8 engine, um, and he'll make sure that he has all the windows rolled down because you need to be able to see him in the car, and he'll make sure that it's really loud, like those pipes. You're gonna hear them even if you're in your house. He needs he needs all the attention. He's gonna have a cool look on his face. You're definitely never gonna catch him smiling, and um, you know he uses this to he uses his I don't wanna say his wealth, but the things that he's accumulated to attract other um, women and um, usually the type of women he's attracting is the type that are the type of that are impressed by those things <laughs> and so you know shallow men um, attract shallow women the sad thing about it is as soon as he gets tired of this woman as as soon as uh you know as soon as he gets just too comfortable i don't want to say too comfortable just bored um he's going to trade her in for something new something shinier something even prettier because she is there to adorn him almost like he worked hard for that car or you know he, he could have actually stepped on a lot of people's toes to get to the um to the wealth that he has but uh just like he was relentless in that he is relentless and always knows that there's always someone better there's always someone prettier and uh, so you know this this root chakra it, it's overactive and it's all about um i don't want to say greed but um <laughs> you're you're not really thinking about making emotional connections you're not thinking about working together with others of a healthy partnership you're thinking about what is this going to get me you're in survival mode in you know that survival instinct but where in a woman it can be kind of um it, it'll work to her detriment like sometimes she actually won't get to a place where she can buy that luxury car on her own she'll start to actually use other people for a man he he will have like the power he will have the strength to gain whatever he needs to gain whether it's selling illegal drugs or you know doing other you know activities that you know are frowned upon in our society he'll do whatever he can to get there and he will be successful um for for a woman usually she does not go the route completely alone she definitely you know she might kind of grapevine from man to man to man and seeing what they can gift her like don't don't get me wrong she earns it she will put in the work whether if it's sexual favors or whatnot 
Um, but yeah, for, for a man, this is usually he's not using a woman to get there. Um, cause if we're being honest, uh, a lot of men are, um, you know, I don't want to say overworked, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of men who make a lot more than women do. Why this is, I do not know. Going back to the root chakra for a man, for this to be balanced, you know, he, he's able to connect with others, with women emotionally. It, it won't just be about the physical, about conquering, about you making him look good and being a part of his collection of prized items, or maybe he has a new flavor every week because that makes him look like the man, makes him look successful. Um, but you know, he's able to not only connect, but to maintain long-term relationships. There are some people who are only really able to have a happy, stress-free relationship or courtship. So they're not even in a relationship yet, but they're only able to maintain that for a couple weeks. And then it's like by the fourth week, by one month, you know, issues start popping up. Jealousies or insecurities or, you know, are you texting other people? Do you know what I mean? So for both men and women, you know, they're not able to maintain healthy relationships or happy relationships where what they're putting in is what they're getting out and it's an equal exchange of give and take and something that leaves both parties feeling fulfilled. For ways that women, if you've noticed that you have an overactive root chakra, um, there are ways for you to balance it. Um, <laughs> you might not like this, <laughs> but uh, one of the ways to balance the overactive root chakra would be to find financial stability and I know that sounds very counterintuitive like wait it's overactive because I don't have enough because I'm barely getting by and I'm overworking myself and to be honest there will be times in our lives where we have to click that root chakra on and we have to put in more work than we are having pleasure received so we have to stay very focused um, remember everyone has all these chakras men have these chakras women have the same chakras and so we need to have them balanced you never want to turn one off you never want to not use one when you are the happiest when you're the most fulfilled and living your life purpose all of them are working <laughs> all of them are working so for this um you know to kind of balance this out you would definitely want an emotional steadfast or you know something that emotionally you can cling on and so for women sometimes this is your religion or your faith it is not good to put this into someone else if you think you're going to cling to another person sometimes when we cling to other people we can kind of scare them off we can push them away we can repel them by our neediness and so people with a strong faith whether you are a christian or a catholic whether you um you know partake in pagan rituals really believing in a higher power or um you know whatever you believe in that can really help you to have faith in the future and to help um, balance you emotionally because you will need something to help balance you while you are in this this root chakra mode so for the root chakra mode we we don't want to take the easy way out we don't necessarily want to oh we've been talking for two weeks now um you know I'm really falling behind on rent can we maybe become roommates now like you really don't want to do that i know it sounds like it should be okay but for sometimes that can get people in bad situations when they're just moving in with guys that they just started dating or seeing or they're trying to you know save on rent um if you're going to do something like that i um i suggest that you do it with either the same sex um or like an older couple <laughs> or your parents okay you know you want a safe place where you can come home you know you want a cheap place first off but a safe place where you can come home you can study or do whatever you need to basically secure your future whatever higher learning you're looking into you also need to be able to trust them you know you need to be able to trust them and not get wrapped up in you know emotional things happening and just things that you really shouldn't be worrying on when you're focusing on bettering yourself financially and getting ahead so I think moving in with your parents, if you had, you know, if your parents are, you know, the, the types that aren't going to put you in danger. I know a lot of people have parents that are very, you know, negative and it's a very toxic environment, but kind of stepping away and um, making sure that, you know, you have a roof over your head that knowing you don't have to do everything by yourself, you can become a roommate in a safe place while you are 
you know, working on saving or you're working on taking your classes, um, especially for those who are single parents, usually you need someone that you can trust to help you with your children. And usually that's going to be a very, very close friend or a family member. And so a lot of people don't wanna hear that. They wanna do it all on their own. And sometimes when we're in the rat race and it's like you're never getting forward, and you put in work and then something happened and that money that you just took months to save is gone you know you just keep getting setback after setback and so you have to understand that there has to be a time where you're gonna have to sacrifice something whether that's your you know freedom of living alone or um you know eating nutritious but very boring foods not going out you're gonna have to sacrifice for a short period of time in order to secure your future so for some people this is going to be three months for others it's going to be six months um but just within that time you can 100 percent completely turn your life around um as another sacrifice might be i know for some people you know there's jobs that allow you to kind of have some free time but then there's jobs that if you take that job and even work in it for just a couple of months at like you know 60 to 70 hour work weeks that could actually set you up and finally get you ahead and so sometimes you just I know I've had to do this you know bite the bullet go ahead and know that I'm not gonna have a life because I'm new working 65 to 70 hour work weeks but the money I'll be making at this job, while it's not a regular job, and this is nothing that I can sustain full term, I'm going to be saving all of that money, and this is gonna get me way, way ahead than that other job of being the receptionist in that, you know, dental office, you know, or being, you know, a caretaker and babysitting someone's children. So sometimes, you know, sacrifices have to be made, and during this root chakra, um stage in your life so we talked about um how having something to anchor you emotionally with your higher self whether that be your religion or your beliefs that's what's going to really help you get through that's what's going to help you have faith um i don't want you to anchor yourself in someone else especially if it's friends who oh let's go out tonight because sometimes when we're working so hard other people can inadvertently they don't know that they're doing it but they can get us unfocused and we can will forget what our main goal is. It's like we get caught up on these side quests when the main quest is definitely harder and it's longer, but um, that can definitely slow you down because then you start going out, you know, just once a week and then, you know, you're spending $40 here and $60 here and oh, but I need to treat myself. And it's just like, no, you have to have the discipline of the root chakra to stick to your goal because, you know, if you just, if you can maintain that discipline and sacrifice, whether it's for three months, five months, or six months, it's going to completely change your life because you're finally going to be ahead, you know? So you're going to put in all this work. You're going to have this overactive root chakra, but you're going to balance it out by your belief in yourself or your belief in your higher power. But you have to stay focused during this. And so a lot of times while I was on this mission, sometimes I would get wrapped up in relationships and it would completely derail me because I would be looking for, I guess, a, in a way to escape, but just like, just for a little bit bit but it's so funny because just escaping for a little bit or one night or two nights for for some reason it would kind of throw me all off and i would start getting lazy so why are we working so hard you just told us that you know an overactive root chakra sometimes can work against us and you're right an overactive root chakra for long periods of time 100 percent can work against us but there are times where it is absolutely a necessity and but we have to balance it out with emotional with our, our beliefs with um you know at higher power whatever it is that that's really the only thing that's going to save you when you are in that some people when they're stuck in the the root chakra they have no morals there's nothing that they won't do you know, that could be sleeping with like a sugar daddy or something like that. Um, you know, they just, they will lower their standards. So once you've done that work, whether it was three months or it was six months of intense saving of you, maybe even moving back home so you could save a little bit more, or there's an elderly couple who has a finished basement and it's only 300 or $400 a month. And so you and your little one move into there for a couple months or maybe even a year. Um, once you started saving up, you're gonna have finally money and savings. And so, Hopefully this is enough to cover, let's say you were to get hurt, and this is just, I'm not saying you're going to get hurt, but um, this is a, you know, something, just a couple, however much money this could be, but a couple of thousand dollars, or maybe just two thousand dollars, to be able to 
you know, um, keep you afloat for if you were to stop working for the next one to two months. Um, you're not really saving this because you think you're going to stop working for one to two months. You're saving this because this is like, this is your emergency fund and you have no idea how satisfying, how just good it feels, how it fills you up to know you have that safety net. This is your safety net. This is something that you created. So we're not saving it up to put it somewhere else. This is the savings that you never touch that maybe you will contribute to maybe 10% every month or 10% every paycheck or maybe even a little more. But once you have that, that will help you from getting into a cycle of dependency because on an internal, this is what I've noticed, internally, even subconsciously, I knew that I did not need help. Right? I, I was not so needy for what am I going to do now or what if this goes wrong like I was able to get ahead and it helped me sleep better at night and um, it just it helped me feel secure and so sometimes that material security after a time of being very disciplined and of having no life sometimes that will completely change your mindset and your outlook and you will notice that you are not so worried about how much money do you make when you're on a first date or what kind of car do you drive like you're not in that mode anymore you're feeling very relaxed and um you know you a little bit of confidence and this happens again on a subconscious level because you don't really realize it but um you're no longer in that lack mindset um you're just you're very stable and you're balanced and um you know this when you're in that you're able to feel joy or be you're you know you're able to actually go out for a drink or two and be able to relax and not looking to see who just walked in or did that guy text you back um i don't know it just it completely changes your aura and um it it changes the people that uh, you attract to you so having something like that will really really help um you know there's other ways other than um, especially this is for people who have an overactive root chakra um so for them this could be the difference between doing something out of desperation or lowering your standards and just being more true to yourself now this video is getting very long so i'm gonna turn this off here um but we do have more um to talk on when it comes to balancing these things and to attracting um amazing people and opportunities into your life because it's not just people you're going to be it's like doors just start opening when you change your mindset and um, you change your subconscious thinking